water and energy used and produced efficiently will determine the well-being of the human race and our existence on this planet. Earth and nature have always existed. It is the human race as we know it that faces the danger of extinction. Nature continues with its harmonious processes, be it the water cycle, the transpiration from forests, or be it the gradual slow evolution of species. But humans with their unique minds continue to innovate at breakneck speed to improve the comfort and convenience with which we live. This indiscriminate use of water and energy has resulted in the climate vulnerability and change that we are seeing all around us today, posing one of the greatest threat to our existence. World leaders have formulated policies and SDGs which act as a blueprint to achieve a better and sustainable future for all people in the world. But words need to turn into action on the ground. Anything we do or achieve is simply with the use of energy. Energy is burnt for all our practices and to me is the largest culprit we have created. We need to bring in circularity in our energy use patterns and production. Making energy last longer before it is burnt will turn out to be the key to reaching the goal of eliminating further damage to the ozone layer and preventing erratic climate events. The circularity of energy can be centered on three overarching principles. One, prioritizing alternate forms of energy. Two, maximizing product use before discarding so that we consume less. And three, recovering waste, excess or even free energy that is available. So, what do I mean by circularity in energy? How do I make it possible? Innovation in the energy sector has a huge role to play in the development of a circular economy. Alternate renewable sources need to be mainstreamed and these include innovative materials to store energy. Circularity in energy through these innovative materials would also create closed loop cycles in which energy is reused. You are familiar with batteries for storage of electricity that enables a myriad of possibilities. It enables flexibility, demand management and extension to use renewable energy. But 50% of final consumption of energy goes towards heating or cooling. A lot of this heat or cooled is available as waste heat in our processes or even free cooling, say on a cool summer evening. This can be stored. That's free energy. Have you ever wondered that this could be changed using innovative materials for storing heat or cold or enable thermal energy storage? The science has always existed and we all know how ice can be used to cool your drinks. That's thermal energy. The latent heat during change of phase from solid ice to liquid water or vice versa stores tremendous amount of heat which we can use. We have eliminated the need of multiple conversions of heat to electricity and back to heat, increasing efficiency is manifold. India imports much of its natural gas. We dump 38 million metric tons of waste coal in our seas. This happens in the process of converting liquid natural gas to gas. 
the temperature is minus 160 degrees Celsius. You'd be surprised to know that theoretically India's waste cooled generation from regasification of liquid natural gas is a whopping 525,000 terawatt hours of cooling, perhaps sufficient to provide a decade worth of global space cooling. The answer to harnessing all this energy is thermal energy storage through phase change materials. Today, there are over 40 different PCMs, whether you need to store energy at minus 65 degrees Celsius or you need to store it at plus 90 degrees Celsius. For instance, a commercial building in Netherlands captures 18 degrees Celsius cool, which is available at night to lower the air conditioning demand in the day. Waste heat from ship engines is being stored for space heating at plus 60 to plus 80 degrees Celsius and used for room and space heating through the night. In Europe, 120 terawatt hours of high temperature heat is emitted from process industries, equivalent to the annual space heating demand of Europe. Just store it. Imagine if this heat is stored and used in the extensive greenhouses that dot the landscape of Netherlands, the world's second largest food producer. Heating and cooling is not just for comfort, but transport too. Did you know that through innovative materials and thermal engineering design, in India, in the last five years, over 30,000 tons of carbon dioxide emissions have probably been saved. This was achieved by simply electrification of the cooling systems in 500 trucks. It is not just climate change that is affected, but so are costs. Storing thermal energy is about 30 times cheaper than storing electricity in lithium ion batteries. You'd be amazed to know what a great role PCMs can play in addressing the cooling needs for food and health. We need cooling to keep our children healthy, our vaccines stable, food nutritious, energy supply stable, economies productive, and environment clean. In a warming world, access to cooling is no longer a luxury. Often, the greatest opportunity lies in the greatest challenge. We need to act fast. Around 30% of the world's population is currently exposed to life-threatening temperatures for at least 20 days a year. Heat waves already lead to 12,000 deaths annually across the world. These numbers will increase as the planet warms. Lack of cooling kills, but so does providing inefficient polluting cooling. If left unchecked, emissions from cooling are expected to double by 2030 and triple by 2100, driven by heat waves, population growth, urbanization, and a growing middle class. Cooling will be one of the top drivers of global electricity demand over the next three decades. By 2015, space cooling alone will consume as much electricity as China and India today do. This doesn't even include the demand for cold chain. We need to design devices that can provide health treatment without the use of electrical energy. So what next? One, identify where waste heat or coal is available. Two, capture it. And three, direct it towards where the demand is. The world today and of the future would require flexibility 
and control over demand responsiveness which is possible by thermal energy storage. To optimize thermal energy use, we would need to start moving towards providing heat and cold storage as a service. We need to move beyond net zero energy by generating equivalent energy as consumed and by reusing energy. Therefore, I strongly believe that circularity in energy is the need of the hour. Thank you.